So now we want to edit this code to get the index of each occurrence. So for example, the first occurrence index is zero because the first character of this occurrence is at index zero. This occurrence over here is at index 12 because this character index is 12. And this one over here is at index 18 because this character index is 18. So we expect to see 0, 12, 18. Okay, now let's see how are we going to solve this. In this function over here, we are iterating over all the characters of this string, right? And over here, we are passing the string starting from the character at index i. So when i is equal to 0, we are passing this string. And this function will test if we have an occurrence starting from this character. So if this function returns true, we are increasing count. And also, when this function returns true, this means that at this index, we have an occurrence. So suppose that we increased i until we reach 12. So now i is equal to 12. So we are giving this function the string starting from the character at index 12 over here, right? So we are giving it this string. So if this function returns true, we will increase count. And also, this means that at i equal 12, we have an occurrence. One more example. Suppose we increase i until we reach index 18. So we are giving this function this string over here. So if this function returns true, we will increase count. And also, this means that i equal 18 is the index of this occurrence. So the solution is in this variable over here. So we want to do something like this. I want this condition and let's remove this code. So we'll say if we found an occurrence, we want to do two things. First of all, let's increase the count. And over here, we will print the index. So print percent %d and we want to print i. Okay, run the program. And as you can see, we have 0, 12, 18. And this number over here is this printf. It's printing the number of occurrences. So as you can see, we got 0, 12, 18, and this is what we expected. So basically, this is our solution, and it's very easy. It's all about this variable over here. Now let's make this output a little bit better. So let's say we want to print occurrence percent %d is at percent %d. So for example, occurrence 1 is at 0, occurrence 2 is at 12, occurrence 3 is at 18. So this over here will be a variable. So for example, Let's call it J. And this variable will be increased whenever we print an occurrence. So we don't want to put J++ over here. We will get a wrong answer. So let's build the program. Oops, I didn't define J yet. So let's start from one. Now run the program again. Let's put a backslash N over here. Run the program. Now, as you can see, occurrence one is at zero. Occurrence 13 is at 12 and occurrence 19 is at 18 and this is wrong this is because we are increasing j every time we increase i and this is not correct so what we want to do is to increase j only when we print an occurrence so when we print occurrence one now we want to increase j so the next time this condition is true we will print over here two and then we will increase j so the next time this condition is true we will print three and then we will increase j and so on so over here, we can put J++. So we will take the current value of J, print it, and then increase it. And this only happens whenever we print an occurrence. Not every time I is increased, J is increased, okay? So build and run the program, and we have the correct output. So occurrence 1 is at 0. So when this printf is executed, J will be equal to 2. Now, as you can see, here we printed 2, so the current value of J. And when this is executed, now J is equal to 3. And then we have occurrence 3 is at 18. Now we can do this in another way. So let's say we have plus plus j. Build and run the program. And now we have occurrence 2, 3, 4. This is wrong, right? To fix this, just start j from 0. So first of all, it is 0. So we want to print plus plus j. So we increase it, then we print it. So first of all, we will print 1. So the second time, we will print 1 plus 1. So we increase j, then we print it. So we print 2. And the third time, we also increase it, then we print it. So we print 3. Build and run, and we have the same output. So this is a practice on the difference between j++ and j. So this is it for this exercise. We got what we wanted. Now let's see the second code. As you can see, we have another project over here, and this project is in bold. 
So if I build and run this, this project over here will run. Now we want to run this project. So double click it. And now this project is in bold. So when we build, build and run, this project over here will be executed. So let me close this file. And now we want to do the same thing with this code. So this occurrence is index zero. This occurrence is at index six and so on. Okay. So basically we have the same thing. So this variable over here is iterating over all the characters. And this for loop is checking starting from this variable if we have an occurrence. So when we reach this point over here, if this variable is true, this means that we have an occurrence at this character, right? So also I over here is the index of our occurrence. So inside this if we will do two things also the same. So count plus plus and we want to print f, let's say occurrence percent d is at percent d. We want to print a variable, let's call it j for example, and we want to print i, right? Now, I want to say one thing, this variable can be called j, but you may be asking, we have j over here. Well, have a look. This loop is on the same level with this if statement, right? So this j over here is defined only to work inside the loop. So when we exit the loop, this j is destroyed. So whenever we reach this point, this j over here does not exist. So this j is different than this j. Now let's see where we want to define this j. We can define it outside of the loop like before. So int j is equal to one. And over here, we want to print j plus plus. So when this loop is working, let's say we have str1 sub j. Since this loop has its own j, it will use this j over here. We start from the smaller scope to the bigger scope. So this loop searches in its scope if there is a j. And yes, it finds j over here. So it uses it. Now this if searches inside its scope for a j and it don't find. So it searches in this for loop if there is a j and it also doesn't find one. So this if statement will not use this j because whenever this for loop finishes executing, this j will be destroyed. So when this if statement searches in this scope for j, it will not find one. So now we will search inside this scope. And yes, we will find this j over here. So this j will be used here. Let's build and run the program. Oops, let's put backslash n. Run again. So occurrence 1 is at 0, 2 is at 6, 3 is at 11, and 4 is at 16. And this is correct, okay? And this over here is the number of occurrences. We are printing it in the main. So we are done, but I want to show you one thing. Let's suppose to make things clearer for someone who reads my code, I want to define this variable over here. So I don't want someone to be confused. Is this a J, this one, or it is the one that was defined over here, okay? So to do this, we can define this variable over here. But like this, we will not get a correct answer. Build and run the program. As you see, every time we have occurrence 1, 1, 1, 1. This is because whenever this condition is true, we are defining j to be equal to 1. Then we are printing 1, and then we are increasing j, so j is equal to 2. And when this block finishes executing, j will be destroyed. So the second time this condition is true, we will redefine j to be equal to 1. So we will print 1, and then increase j, and then j will be destroyed. So now you see what's happening. So in order to protect this j and not make it destroyed, I told you before we have the static keyword and now we are practicing it. So this static keyword will make this statement execute only one time and whenever we exit this block, j will not be destroyed. So first time this condition is true, we will define j equal to one. Then we will print one and increase j, so j is equal to two. Now we will exit this block and since this is static, the variable j will not be destroyed. It will stay inside the memory. So the second time this is true, this statement will not be executed because we have static it is only executed one time so j is still equal to 2 and over here we will print 2 and then we will make plus plus so now j is equal to 3 and then we will finish executing this block and j will not be destroyed and it will still be equal to 3 so i hope you see how we use the static keyword now build and run the program and as you see we have the same correct result and one more thing I noticed that I'm using strlen in the condition. So of course, it's better to put the value inside a variable and use the variable over here in order not to call strlen every time.
So if you want, you can fix this over here and also in the previous question over here and over here. Okay, so this is it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.